I'm in Huddersfield to get up close and personal with two of England's best cage fighters, Dave and Ian Butlin. They are the driving force behind the England mixed martial arts team who will compete at the M1 Challenge in Japan in two weeks time. So far they've taken me hunting and although they didn't say much, I don't need to answer that. I've learned that they are very different characters. Dave is the serious silent one who keeps his older and livelier brother Ian in check. I want to go to Uddersfield. As they started telling me more about themselves, I discovered that being minor celebrities and local faces in Huddersfield means everyone wants to have a pop at them. Fighting civilians, we, we call them civilians, people that are trained to fight what you'd call the hardest guy in the pub, basically like shooting fish in a barrel, it's, that's, that's not even sport. Everyone knows who Ian did Deva, you know what I mean? You don't want to go and get on the wrong side of them. You don't fuck about them, and you don't want to fuck about with a pair of them when they're together. They once even took on the local football firm. HYC they call them, so the Huddersfield football hooligans. Bunch of pussies. And we smashed them to pieces. Absolutely smashed them. There were people getting choked out, people getting knocked out, elbows, knees. I'd say 11 to 12 people. In Huddersfield, they're big fish in a little pond. But when they get to Japan, they're going to be little fish in a very big pond. This is the World Cup of Mixed Martial Arts, where 12 of the best countries compete against each other. The Butlin twins are ready to take on the world. I want to go out there and prove to myself that I can beat the best guys in the world. I'm confident that we've got the, we've got the team to win the whole competition. I wouldn't be in it if I didn't. So where did it all begin? I believe I was born a fighter. I just learned how to do it better. And I think Dave's the same. I've been hitting Ian since we were, uh, since we could actually hit each other. Ironically, for a pair who are usually trying to knock people's teeth out, they came from a family of dentists. And it was their parents who introduced them to fighting by sending them to martial arts classes. Started off with judo, mainly because my parents didn't want us hitting each other. Maybe my parents were trying to stop us from, from doing something, but it actually created a monster. Ian is the less disciplined twin, and it wasn't long before his love of fighting got out of control. When he was 16 years old, he was convicted of being involved in a fight with a fellow pupil who was stabbed with a knife. Ian was sent to a young offenders institution for three months, and Dave was asked to leave the school in case he intimidated a witness. I was absent with the headmaster's permission so as not to intimidate, intimidate witnesses. Obviously it must have been bad for you, but... Just having him not around, not being able to, you know, look out for him. Kind of strange. Helpless. I can tell that this had a big effect on the boys. I can only imagine what it must have been like to be separated for the first time in 16 years. We are very close, so it's hard to be put away from my brother for so long. I wouldn't want it to happen again. I wouldn't want it, um, I wouldn't want it to be took, took away from where, it was, where we were in that situation again. I would do everything in my powers for that not to happen. They're not totally inseparable though. They do live apart. We're going to Ian's place, a one bedroom bachelor pad. It's a really smart gaff, apart from the front door, which has been kicked in. Right about. I'm surprised to be told it wasn't burglars, but the police. They smashed the door with a battering ram. I'm curious to know why. They just came in mob and to prove the point because they're saying, oh, you're cage fighters. Police come steaming in. I've already got out of bed because I didn't go police, police. So I've gone down to go down on my knees because I'm not fighting them. There's about, uh, about 10 of them came, uh, come in. I said, what are you arresting me for? We're arresting you for possession with intent to supply Class A drugs. We found a large quantity of white powder. Well, I'm not being, not being funny, but I'm an athlete. I'm sponsored by a supplement company and they found three kilos of creatine. Oh, well, okay. Creatine is a bodybuilding supplement that Ian uses regularly as part of his training. He was taken to the police station for further questioning and held overnight, but no charges were brought against him. The boys revealed to me an interesting theory as to why the police raided the flat. Being a bit of a ladies' man, and sometimes with other people's ladies, causes Ian problems. Ian can't keep his dick in his pants. There's people who have been annoyed that I might have been with a girlfriend or something, and I think they 
just see a weird getting back at me, I can't beat him in a fight, so I'll just tell the police that he's done this, or, do you know what I mean? I think there's a lot of that because there seems to be stuff, when, when they've asked me about things, I'm thinking, where, where do you get your intelligence from? While I'm reading the, um, the Art of War and the 48 Laws of Power, Ian's reading The Art of Seduction, and yet again improving on his uh, pickup techniques. So he's got the manual. And I can see he's got the tools. There's about 300 quid's worth of skincare products, and being so artfully placed, I suspect this is no accident. I think he suffers from a bit of OCD. Danny, if, if I came in and I moved things, <laughs> like yeah, this, it, 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 it does it to me all the time. Oh my god, <laughs> you can't handle this. Yeah, you can't bear that. Right, you can't wait to get involved with <laughs> this. Yeah. 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 While you're at the gym, we'll remind you about it. That's funny, that's funny. He's got to do it, look, he's got to. I've seen for myself first hand that Ian is the party boy of the pair. I wonder what Dave's place is like. We turn up at the house, and instead of bottles of moisturiser, it's kids. Dave has a 12-year-old stepson, Kane, a six-year-old stepdaughter, Taylor, a two-year-old son, Tyler, and three-month-old, Dee Dee. He lives with his partner of two years, Nicola. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Beautiful kids you got there. She's getting dinner ready. Uh, what, what, what are you doing for me? It's game. What is it? Pheasant, rabbit, it? It's game. Oh, it's all that game, is it? <laughs> we're, we're in the game game. Pheasant, rabbit, and... Oh, lovely, that. Yeah, that's, that's a right, so that's a right northern old dish, that, isn't it? Sure. Kids hold of that, look. Get on it. I just, I just wanted to know, really, what's it, what's it like being married to a twin? It's all right, because I'm with a good one. Is he the good one? I'm is with a good one, he's just, just from sort of running around with him, that, that Ian would be the good one. I mean, Dave's got, he's got, he's, he's got a bit of a bad look about him. He's a, Grumpy, he looks, Yeah, he looks a yeah, bit like... Grumpy. It's hard to make him smile, Yeah, he's a fussy cat, real. Yeah. He's a better one, yeah. I've got Dave all wrong. He might look scary, but he's really a family man with a softer side that I think he likes to keep hidden. Look, she's got a ra rabbit arch down there. Yeah. So you do like rabbits then? Shh. All right, then we'll keep that low. Me and my boys. Beautiful pictures, Zeb. I can see that family is everything to Dave, but fighting used to be his greatest passion. <laughs> He was feared in the cage and had a promising professional career ahead of him. Dave was an up-and-coming fighter. He would have been, he'd have been a brilliant fighter. But a car accident finished his fight career. And it's obvious to me that it's killing him. I have to sit every day and endure watching people do what I love to do and I can't do it, so how much would you miss it? Of course, it's, it's, not, it's not good. It's, yeah, it's devastating. Being just a coach for the Big Japan Challenge means that Dave can join me for some rabbit stew. Thank you very much. How do you eat up, North? Do you have a spoon or anything? <laughs> but Ian can't. Weight is a big issue for him, so he's on protein shakes to try and make his fight weight. Ian is under strict instructions not to go drinking, but I know Ian's a party boy. And I want to know what happens when he breaks the rules. I've knocked him out before. Knocked him. <laughs> <laughs> bust my jaw and everything. Did I get my yeah. point across? I felt it the next day. Ian had been on a three-day bender, and Dave wasn't happy. It looks bad that he's dragged me out of bed and broken my jaw, but he was frustrated. Really, that was just throwing my life away. Lovely. There's a lot more frustration for me if he goes out drinking and partying and it's basically a slap in the face to me if he does that which is why I get a slap in the face, he gets a left hook in the jaw he eats soup but hopefully he's learnt his lesson At first it sounds like an extreme reaction from Dave but I think in a bizarre way it shows just how much he cares about his brother. Although not all brothers could get over such a violent incident. I've got a brother, 18 months younger than me. If I was to break my brother's jaw, I don't think we'd ever speak again. I feel that because Dave can't fight, he's got Ian doing his fighting for him. Dig deep, everything you've got! But Ian isn't the only one who fights for Dave. 
I've come to Quarnham Gym where he coaches up and coming fighters. Dave is a high